Brian Fisher, supposedly Christian pastor, recently lamented about how the wealthy are being totally unfairly treated by everyone else. Overall federal receipts from the top 1% of earners rose by 1.3 percentage points to 29.3% of all federal tax revenue. Now, they control about 17% of the wealth, but they pay almost, 20, almost 30%, 29.3% of all federal tax revenue. Rather than the poor and the low income and the middle class being resentful of these people, they should be kissing the ground on which they walk. So they ought to be given ticker tape parades once a week uh, in uh, all of our major cities to thank them for funding welfare. And they say that the poor people have a problem with feeling entitled. Look, this article that Fisher is reading from, I don't know where they got their numbers, but in 2010, the wealth distribution in America went like this. The top 1% controlled 42% of the wealth of the United States. The top 5% control 72% of the wealth, and the bottom 80% control 5% of the financial wealth in America. Now, I think it's pretty obvious why the 1% pays more taxes. It's because they have all the money. Now, what do you guys think about this? Well, Brian Fisher is an incredibly stupid and heinous man. He thinks that gays are evil. Um, he recently tweeted out that he thinks... Um, second generation Muslims cause 218% more crime than first generation Muslims that should suspend all Muslim in immigration. He's an exceptionally stupid man who basically just favours white rich men. That's, that's all he cares about. L luckily he falls into that category so he really only cares about himself and his whole the rich deserve a ticker tape parade and stuff they have been receiving a ticker tape parade in terms of tax cuts and tax breaks and subsidies for their companies and you know their hedge funds that they own. They've been receiving that for easily the last 20 years. I mean, I don't know who's watching Brian Fisher, but anyone who's not in the 1% must be just livid with him. How is he, as a, I don't want to call him a broadcaster, as a radio personality, shall we say, like, who honestly is going to be watching him and thinking, no, that's exactly the right message? There must be so many people who must be disgusted with him and should be disgusted with him. It's just, a, it really is a, a stupid and heinous thing to say at the same time. Those are the two worst things to combine together. Yeah, it's it's hard to respond because that that clip just hurts to watch. You know, like it's just it's just so full of like this. This, this anger at people who are poor because they're poor, like it, it's just such a despicable thing. It, it's it's hard to to try to respond to it in an intelligent, you know, intellectual way. Um, I guess the the angle I want to take on this is, as you pointed out, the the numbers he threw out are wrong. So his point has no merit. But even if it did, like, if, let's let's give him the benefit of the doubt, which we know isn't true, but let's pretend it is. Dude, who cares? You still don't have a leg to stand on. Like, your argument is that, hey, you, guess what? The people who are on food stamps aren't paying for those food stamps. That's the whole point of food stamps. You can't afford to pay for food. So those of us who can, you know, lend you a few bucks and subsidize that for you, do it. Because it's stupid to live in the wealthiest country in the history of the world and have people starve to death. So we got together as a people and elected officials who would pass programs like this, and it was awesome, and it was a good thing, and it's worked fairly well. And so I didn't realize this guy was supposedly a pastor, like you said. Like to see uh, not only a Christian, but uh, someone who claims to be a Christian leader have such hostility to the poor is. That in and of itself is heartbreaking, but like, like, think about what he's saying. You should be, he's telling them, you should be worshiping the rich. He's not even telling them to, you know, thank God that, you know, this money was provided for them. To so that what he should be saying is, hey, we in the church are sorry we didn't meet this need and the government had to, because that's the Christian position. We should have taken care of this. We failed miserably. But thankfully, in America, where Christians are part of the government, we can, you know, find another way to do that good thing, and other people can help out too, and that's awesome. 
that's great. But um, but so he should be saying, hey, we're sorry, but thank God you're still getting fed, and, and thank God for that food. Instead, what he's saying is, thank the rich people, thank, thank money, thank wealth, thank the thing that Jesus Christ himself said, you can't serve this and me. That's who you should be worshiping. That yeah, is he's, despicable. He's he, he's no Christian in any sense of the word. He's just using it as a mask to cover up his own bigotry. But at, as a radio host, you know, with a show, you want to your main goal is to get as many viewers as possible. So even you know, like you said, if you assume that you know the numbers are correct and the rich are the you know the one percent are these brilliant guys, you know, we should kind of fall on our hands and knees at their feet. You shouldn't be saying that because you're not going to gain any more viewers or listeners. That you know, you, if anything, you're going to lose viewers and listeners, and that's not your kind of that's not your driving factor. Having your own radio show, you want to gain as many listeners as possible. So even if he believed all that, and even if it was all true, he still shouldn't be saying that. So I don't understand why he's saying that. I mean, one assumes well, well, Stephen, he's a rich you don't understand. Opinion. You don't understand right-wing radio. They eat this stuff up. The people who listen to him must be... Uh, I have to say, it, they must be some of the stupidest people out there, you know, the people who listen to these right-wing people, because they're insulting you. They're verbally slapping you around the face. Why are you listening to these people? I mean, it's like self-flagellation. It's ridiculous. Well, yeah, that that is one thing that Brian Fisher definitely likes to teach people, too, is to... You should smack yourself in the face, especially since you're poor, because they teach you, people like that and right-wing pastors, ultra-right-wing pastors, will like to teach you that if you're poor and broke, that's your own fault, and you should be punished for that, or you are being punished for that. So you, you're sinful, you're flawed, and that's why you're poor, and that's why you're broke. But to get to, uh, to, get to Brian Fisher... Basically saying that you should be kissing the, the feet of the rich and everything like that uh, because we're providing all the welfare. Look at this giant burden that we have to – we've got to take care of you because you guys are lazy and you're shiftless and you don't want to take care of yourselves. So now we got to give all – got to pay all this money, our money. We're going to – giving it to you, so we should be getting a ticker tape parade. No, you know what? You shouldn't be getting a ticker tape parade. You're the reason that people are poor. These, some, a lot of these rich people, they have all the money. This money is not going back into the economy. It's not going to create jobs. And one thing I know of a great way to reduce these guys' tax burdens, if they're really, really pissed off and like, oh, man, I hate paying this taxes to get the, to, for, for these people to get welfare, well, why don't you take some of that money, invest in your business, create good-paying, middle-class jobs here in America, then you will actually get a larger middle-class that can pay the taxes. See, that's how America actually used to run. We had a large middle class that shared most of that tax burden. We had rates for millionaires up to 90%. Now, to be fair, no one actually paid that. It was more like 50%. But the middle class floated everything up because it was so large, and you could spread out that spending and still have a decent lower rate for the middle class. It's one of these middle-out strategies, and that worked until the plutocrats decided that they were not getting enough of that share. They wanted to be the center of their own economic universe. So they bought the government, deregulated industry, lowered their taxes, and now they bitch about, since they have all the money, that they have to pay most of the taxes. Well, sorry, assholes. Somebody has to pay for those roads. Somebody has to pay for that infrastructure. And you cannot get blood from a stone. No, that's, that's an excellent point, Jeff. I don't know if it's coming from an honest misunderstanding because their their model truly is trickled down. They truly believe that the rich make everything good happen and that good stuff slowly works its way down. So therefore they think the only possible possible alternative so they they you know project onto us what we as liberals believe is bottom up. Whenever what we believe is that the fact based model, the historical model, that it's middle out. Like like the way to build economy is not by giving a ton of money to people who aren't contributing to the economy. And basically a ton of money to people who already have a ton of money. I, I just don't see the sense in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's neither one of those is right. What's right is to create opportunity and to people when people go out and live the American dream and work hard, they are rewarded for that hard work and they are allowed to build the economy. And that's what we used to do. 
Um, right, now, right. now we, we don't want to brush over the fact that we did that for white people. We didn't really do it for other people. That's um, fair. But but it worked for white people. If, if we apply that same concept to everybody else, it'll work for everybody else too. But um, right. And, and you know, and there's this misunderstanding that liberals we want like we want food stamps. We want a bunch of people to be on food stamps, whether or not you know for Democrats to buy votes or whatever with it, whatever. Liberals don't want people on food stamps. We want it to be an option for people who can't take care of themselves, whether or not through, you know, illness or disability or hard times or whatnot, right? We don't want a lot of people on food stamps. That's a fallacy. Like, we don't want this big welfare state. We want it to be there as a safety net, exactly. right? Exactly. Exactly. These people are the biggest indictment against their own argument. This, the people like this. Now he's really more of a mouthpiece for these people than he is, you know, one of them. Right. But like these people that do this, they are the ones who show how much they believe in the safety net and food stamps, because they're not out. They're not out there working for a better economy. They're out there looking to take care of themselves, and they have realized they've crunched the numbers and realized that it is cheaper for them to not pay their workers well and to pay a little bit of their tax money into these food stamp programs that are a tiny part of the of the, what they pay in taxes and that they end up being able to pocket more money at the end of the day whenever because their their tax increase is so marginal to pay for these safety nets over having to pay your workforce a decent wage that and they are getting sub and, and and the other fact is is that you know these people are getting subsidized by the tax. By the same thing they're griping about, totally. Exactly, totally. and so so this is this is where people the argument from people like Brian Fisher falls apart, and it's just it makes it so laughably absurd that he's out there complaining about this problem when there are simple ways to fix it, and it's not all about you know like just just taxing the rich and everything like that. It's also trying to create that create jobs and to create that economic opportunity for to people for people to be able to live a good life and that's that's what we're not doing here in America and people like Brian Fisher are just reinforcing the wrong thing to do yeah i mean my final point is about about Brian Fisher that any reasonable you know any just reasonably informed person is a, would be able to debate him on this topic and just wipe the floor with him. And also, he's the director of issue analysis at the American Family Association. So, of course, he's anti-gay. I have seen rumors on the internet that he's probably in the closet. I think Rachel Maddow called him like a gay poet or something the other week. He, he's an incredibly stupid man who is just being paid, as you said, to act as a mouthpiece to shout out these nonsensical, unfactual untrue statements about the state of the American society.